Hi there, this is Dr. Pan, recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well, and thank you for watching this clip on writing an equation for hyperbola. Hyperbola has two formula of curves, either goes up and down, or goes left and right. Okay, so the way you distinguish the two is, this one is, curve is on the y, then y squared term is positive, as you know. Hyperbola is other one that's subtracting. So for this one, it's on the x term, so it's x squared over, it's called a squared, it's positive. So in general, we have y squared over a squared minus x squared, a squared equal to 1, that's for this one. And then to complete this one, then we have minus equal to 1. Okay, so whichever one curve is on, the term is positive. Okay, so Let's start this question by drawing out to the graph, and then we'll have some idea if the x term is positive or the y term is positive. We're given that uh, vertices is at 0, 2, 2, 0, 2, 0 here, and then minus 2, 0, 2, 0. The good thing about this one, so long the vertices are symmetrical, you know the center is at 0, 0. That's good, that means the curves are not shifted up and down, all right? So we got this piece, and then we're also given foci is 3, 0, and minus 3, 0. A lot of book using C for foci. I found it confusing, because then you get confused with C squared equal to A squared plus B squared. A lot of students think, well, is that Pythagorean theorem? Not really, it has nothing to do with it. So I changed it into f is equal to f squared equal to a squared plus b squared. The way you're going to remember this is hyperbola is really about this box that in the middle. The box basically gives you the asymptotes for the curves. Okay. So one way I always taught myself is this. Look, this f is always bigger than everything else. This is three units. Okay. This is either you call it a or b. It's less than f. So the biggest one is equal to two smaller ones added together. That makes sense, right? So here's our curve. Obviously, the curve, let's write it down, curve is on y-axis. So earlier discussion, so we know that y squared, a squared, minus x squared, b squared equal to 1 is the form. So all we have to do is find what a and b is. Now, it's easy for... Uh, the constant on the y-axis, because we we're given where the vertices are, so a is equal to 2, so a squared is equal to 4. Now, in order to find a b, that's this part over here, we're going to use f squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. f, we were given as 3 squared, is equal to 2 squared plus b squared, and that was pretty easy to find, and so b is equal to radical 5. So here's our finalized equation, y squared over 2 squared minus x squared over radical 5 squared equal to 1. Or if you prefer, let's clean it up, y squared over 4 minus x squared over 5, that's equal to 1. Okay, so that's our final solution. And a similar answer for a similar question, uh, the next one we were given, a graph look like this. Everything else stay the same. The full size is at 2 and 0. The vertices is 1 and 0. So it goes up. Full size here. Vertices here. This is minus 1 and 0. So from here we have x squared equal to a squared plus b squared. f is 2 squared. Okay, 1 squared plus b squared. And then b is radical 3. So once you find that, everything else follows pretty easily. This is the y-axis. So we have a y squared over the a, which is 1 squared, minus x squared over radical 3, the whole thing squared equal to 1. So let's clean it up one more step. y squared over 1 minus x squared over 3 equal to 1. So if we were given a different vertices and different foci, then the information still pretty much stay the same. All right, so here is the solution for the second case. All right, I hope it's clear. And uh, once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun. 
at least trying to. If the video has been helpful, I would appreciate a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.